Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second lecture of functional programming using Cockfield Improver. My name is Mukesh, and I'm a senior research associate at the University of Cambridge. In today's lecture, we are going to continue Boolean logic. But before that, if you're coming directly to this lecture, I would highly suggest you to go back and watch the first lecture and then come back again and watch this lecture. I'll give a link uh, for the first lecture in the description of this video. So without a further ado, let's get started. So in the previous lecture, the first lecture, we learn how to define a data type, like any other functional programming. How do we define the data type in Coq? And we learn that keyword is inductive and we give it a name and then we define two constructors. So only way to define this bool data type is true constructor and false constructor. Then we define the function which takes a Boolean value or bool and returns a bool. And the way we define is that we pattern matching. And how do we do pattern matching? The syntax is match with and then all the cases. And if you remember that what would happen if you forget a case, then call would rightly complain that you are missing a case. So we did that. We evaluated the function to see what value it computes. In this case, negating true twice gives the same thing. And this is, and then we proved so, so far up to that point, defining a data type and defining a function is sort of true over all range, wide range of possible function programming languages. But in Coq, we have this extra leverage. What is that? That we can prove our functions are correct. In this case, we proved that negation of negation of any Boolean value is same value. One thing I pointed or I would like to highlight here is for all B of type bool, what this B can be, you remember B, can, B has, bool has two constructors. So B can be true or B can be false. So I'm saying that or every for all possible boolean boolean value or bool value this equation holds okay and in this case we have just two so that's what i mean to say but um you get the idea that whenever you have complicated data type then there are many possible values of of that there are many constructors <clears throat> then we proved this another lemma, which is negating price returns the same as negating once. And then we define this and Boolean function, which takes two Boolean value B1 and B2. And when both are true, it returns true. Otherwise it returns false. And we prove that for two Boolean values for all B1, B2 of type bool, if the first value is true and the second value is true, then this function returns true, where you can see here just by the case analysis and the proof. 
And similarly, we prove the other direction. So what is other direction? We prove that if this function returns true, then only possibility is this, that B1 is true and B2 is true. So that recaps our first lecture. Remember, defining data type, defining functions, and proving properties about the functions. This is what we call theorem proving. So now moving on, I want to prove that and function is associative. So what do I mean by associativity? So if I do this, associative definition is, if I take, if I do this and for three Boolean values, then this is the same as, Yeah? And it's fairly intuitive that it does not matter the which order we do this operation. So if I take A and then take another B and C and and them first and then and with A, it does not matter that I am first two and then and with third. So let's express this formally in cog. And how would we do that? So first thing, I write it as a theorem. That's the keyword for cock. And now I need to give it a name so that in future I can refer back to this theorem. So I'm going to say that and b and b associative. That's interesting. Okay. And b associative. And now I need to say that for all A, B, C of type bool and put a comma and then express this ex statement and B, A and B, B, C is equal to and B and b a b and c so these two things should be equal and now you look at my window here it says that okay this thing is i need to prove this thing for all a b c of type bool this equation hold which I said and is associated. So let's go into the proof mode. And I do intros A, B, C. Now what it does is it moves A, B, C at the top of the line, means now we have A, B, C in our context. We assumed A, B, C. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to destruct A, and let me do some simplification. Oh, you see, it expanded the definition of the other half. So it expanded the definition of this one. Okay, so rather than simplifying, let me destruct B which means case analysis on B and destruct on C. And now you see we have, first is when A is true, B is true, C is true. The second case analysis say A is true, B is true, C is false. And we haven't gone into this, but let's go one by one and do simplification. And it says that reflexivity. Do SIM simplification and reflexivity. Now I have one more left. So let's do destruct C. 
and reflexivity. And let's do here. Okay. So we have B and C still left. So let's destruct B and destruct C. And do reflexivity because those two terms are same. And no, okay, we have C left. So let's see, destruct C. And reflexivity. So you get the, the idea. What we did here is we, for every value of A, true and false, we go and destruct to case analysis on B. And then for every those value, you do case analysis. And you see this proof has expanded horribly. Now, you don't have to do this, but you can shorten this proof. Now you get the template. So what I am going to do is, I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to do intros. So since the constructors does not take any value, I'm just a bracket and then a R sign. So see what it would do. Let me show you. So if I do, it would be it would destruct A into true and false. So let's do that. It did, you see, it introduced two goals here. A is true and B is false. So let me do the same thing for B and same thing for C and then we'll see. It gave eight goals, rightly so for every value of A, two, two cases for A. For every those two cases, two cases of B, so four. And for every those four cases, two cases of C, so eight cases. Now you can do SIM, PLM, reflexivity eight times, but let me put another this thing. I am adding a semicolon here, and then I'm saying SIM, PLM. So what I'm saying, by this, I'm telling Cork that run this simplifier on every goal generated by this. So once you run, you see this whole thing would be equal to some bool value equal to another bool value. Hopefully it's, it's the same. So you see here, true equal to true, false equal to false. And now again, I can go and tell the flexibility eight times, but we know the trick here. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to tell Cog that, okay, after once you have run simplification, can you run this reflexivity on each of those goals? And you see that there are no more sub goals. So this is a way to shorten the proof that it's, it's more like engineering stuff that you don't want to do a lot of keystrokes. But if you want to understand, uh, I would highly suggest to go through those process and understand what's going on. And now we can do QED, okay? Uh, one more trick, I guess we can. This simplifier is not necessary. The flexibility internally simplifies and does more than. So, so now I don't need simplification. Why I generally write SIMPL? Because I can see how terms reduce. So, so you have an idea what's going on down the line. Okay, 
So now that I have proved and is associative, the next thing we want to prove is that and is commutative. So let's again do that. I'm going to write theorem and be commutative. And for all A, B, I'm going to say that and B, A, B is the same as and B, B, A. So it does not, the order does not matter, right? So let's do proof and intros. So let me go first the lengthy way and then I'll do the shorter way. So intros AB puts A and B into the context from where we can access. We can destruct it, we can do case analysis. Since A and B are bool values, and we know that A can be either true or false, B can be true or false. So let's do case analysis. So I'm going to do destruct A. So it gives two cases. And now for this one, I'm going to destruct B. So destruct B. And then it further splits into two more cases. So I do SIMPL to see that, okay? And since true is equal to true, I can give reflexivity, SIMPL reflexivity. And similarly for the, the false case, I need to destruct B. So destruct B and simplify it and you get the template. Now it's um, simplification and reflexivity. But I don't want to give you this impression that theorem proving is all about SIMPL and reflexivity. For the moment, we are going through the small proofs. Uh, and therefore, it's SIMPL and reflexivity. Uh, when we'll move to future and more complicated proofs, hopefully, then we'll see induction and all sort of other tactics coming in. But for the moment, it's SIMPL and the flexibility, right? And I can, at this point, I can just write QED. It means I have established this fact that the and B I have written is commutative. So let's shorten this that now we know how to do that. So I'm going to do intros. And if I run SIMPL on everything, then it's dodge. Um, it simplifies the term and reflexivity does its job. So that's, the simplification. Okay, so now I'm going to do a bit, a very simple trick. What we are doing here is, let me show you what we are doing inside this thing. So let me show you what did we build. Now, if you look at this thing, the thing it printed, it does same pattern matching here. Forget about these types for the moment. So it matches A and then say that A is true and A is false. The way we have written the and B definition, but this is the proof, except the terms here are more complicated and I don't expect you to understand all this. And then here it says that, okay, then it takes 
another Boolean value B and then matches on B, whether it's true, when it's false, then it's EQ refl, EQ refl. So EQ refl is a Galena term. So far, we using tactics to build internally the Galena term. So EQ refl is a Galena term for when two terms are equal. So let me show you another trick what we can do here. So I'm going to do in draws AB as it is. And now I'm going to write a function. So the tactic is refine and match AB with A is true, B is true. Then I'm, I don't know at this point, but I'm going to leave hold there. Underscore is means I'm not going to fill the term right now. And let's see what happens when type checker processes that. False underscore. False true underscore. And then false. Um, false underscore. And let's write and end and put a dot here. And you see here, we get the, the same thing. So now first, and I can simplify that. So this tactic is about mixing Galena term, means internally writing your functional program. And then you use tactics to manipulate them. So this sometimes it's very handy when you're writing dependent type programs in proof mode. You want to see the high level of your high level picture of your program. And this is where it comes very handy. So let me see if EQ refl will be accepted. It is. So I can just say that. EQ refl, uh, EQ refl, EQ refl. So this simplifier is not needed and you see no more sub goals. So internally, when you are writing a proof, you are basically writing a functional program. You see, there is no distinction between proofs and programs. You write a program using fixed point, and then you write a theorem to prove that that function is correct. But this example demonstrate that when you write theorem with those more complicated terms, you are not doing anything different. You're just using tactics to build more complicated terms, which internally are functions, okay? So this is something which is very fundamental. Um, proves curry Harvard isomorphism, but will not go in, into that detail because our goal is to understand functional programming and how can we prove our functions are correct for those I will probably invite someone more capable than me to talk about that, but that's for some other video. So let's do QED. So, and this proof is finished. So let's do another proof. The another proof which I have in my mind is, if we do this, if we take if we and A and B and negate them, it's, it's the same as negating A 
negating P and Oring them. And we already know this from our digital 101 course. So let's see. And this is the first theorem which hooks all three functions, and B, RP, and NEGB, except we haven't defined RB. So let's first define RB. So definition is that's how we define a, a function, at least up to this point. We haven't reached the fixed point yet. So I'm going to write RB, B1, B2 of type bool. And then we write bool here. So what it means, RB takes two parameters, B1 and B2 of type bool. And it returns a bool. And let's define the body of this function. So I'm going to do pattern match. And the syntax for pattern match is match. Here we have two, so B1 comma B2 width. Now, the only case when both values are false, then RB returns false. So that's all. And for every other case, we are going to return true. And let's, and Kafka is happy. Okay. Now, what would happen if I do this? Well, Cox says that no clause found for true and underscore. So let's let's get back and put our that thing. I think I should mention that this underscore underscore is for any other value other than false and false. Okay. So it can be here true, 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 false, false, true, three more cases. And let me probably write that thing. So if it's true, true, then we get true. If it's true, false, we get true. If I get false, true, then it returns true. Okay, and cock is happy because I have given all possible constructors. It's not happy because you forgot this term, false true. So rather than writing all those tedious cases, we know that if it's false, okay, what's the false? If underscore, underscore, then we return, oh, sorry, true. And, okay. So, so now we have three definitions, N, E, G, B, and B, R, B. And I am going to hook all these three functions together to establish my confidence that they are correct. And how I am going to hook them. So the lemma or the theorem I'm going to use this is this thing. So I'm going to call theorem. And I don't have a good name, so I'm going to just say that and be N E G B R B for all A B C of type bool. This thing. So proof. Let's go the lengthy way. The lengthy way is. So this is an extra thing which I don't need. So let's go the lengthy way. So what is the lengthy way? We're going to do in throws A, B. So now we have assumed A and B in context so that we can do case analysis. 
So let's do case analysis. Destruct A and destruct B. Okay, so one more trick I would like to give here is something. So see that when I'm doing destruct A, imagine if I want to remember what is the value of A here because A is just replaced by true. I want true here with another equation here, which says that A is true. And sometimes there are genuine requirements for this kind of stuff, which we'll see in future. If it's that case, then there is a thing called EQN and you put a colon and give it say HA. And here you can see that now I get an equation that a is true. At this, in this theorem, it's not usable, but it just occurred to me that I should uh, tell this thing as well. Uh, so we destruct A true. So we see that true here. And let's do the same thing for B, destruct B. And I'm going to remember the equation. So you can see at the top, very in our context. Now A is true and B is true. So I am going to do SIMPL and reflexivity. Similarly for the second case and reflexivity. Okay, so let's do destruct B again and I'm going to name it HB. So now A is false and B is true. Let's do simplification and if the two terms are same and no more circle. So that's the lengthy way. Let's do the shorter way. So the shorter way is in trust, so now at the it has split all the goals in one row. S I M P L and reflexivity. Okay, and we can do Q E D here. Let's do the refine way, the functional programming way to enforce our thinking. So intros AB, and now I am going to write a function, which is going to do case analysis on each value of A and B. So match AB with, and A can be true, B can be true here. A can be true, B can be false, underscore, because let's see how cock infers everything. And then A can be false, B can be true, underscore, false, false, underscore, and, and then a dot, and you see that they are the same goals that when we did destruct. So when you do destruct, basically, this is what happening under the hood. You do pattern matching, you destruct, then you destruct. So you destruct A, A gets true, false. Then for every true A, for every true value, you destruct B, then you get true and false, and then you simplify this equation. So say EQ Raphael. So the first goal goes away, the second goal goes away, and say EQ Raphael, third goes. And okay, my apologies. And now it says that no more sub goal. Okay. So 
This is our Boolean logic. And let me recap it because next week we'll start natural numbers. So how do we define a data type? The keyword is inductive. We give it a name and the constructor. How do you intend to construct those? That data type. Then you define your function. You can evaluate your function. You can establish some confidence in your, in by proving some properties about your definition. The keyword is theorem, then you give it a name and then you express your mathematical statement. I haven't talked about much about for all and exist, but for the moment we are going with for all and we'll deal with one more quantifier existential, but that's for future video. Similarly here, we define our and B function. Then we define here theorem about and B, another theorem about and B, theorem means true statement. And then we proved and B is associative. And this time we proved two ways, the lengthy way. And then we learn how to shorten it. So now you can see this proof is so, so small. Here, and B is commuta commutative. So we learn three way, lengthy way, shorter way, more importantly, functional programming way. The goal of this drill is to show you what is theorem proving. So theorem proving is nothing but just a functional programming. I mean, that's how I see. I see this whole thing as a writing functions, except complicated dependent type functions. Then we define RB. And finally, we hooked all our three functions, negation, and B, and an R together to prove another property. Now, what can you do? Possibly you go here to this Boolean algebra on Wikipedia. And you read all this and try to prove as many as you can. And also post um, your learning in comment section that how do you feel about your improving? And also what should I improve? How should I make it more accessible? Because the goal of these videos are to, to make it a beginner friendly. Anyone who has a knowledge of functional programming can just jump onto the cock they're improving. So thank you very much for your time. See you next week.